If you've ever read about AI online, you'll see tons of different jargon being used like LLMs, agents, RAG, and it can be very overwhelming when you Google these terms to see all these different scientific terms that come up making you even more confused. So let me save you hours of your time by explaining to you the top 10 most used Gen AI concepts that are used everywhere right now so that you're able to better understand the news that comes out as well as read different AI research. Let's start with the LLM or large language model. An LLM, you can think of it really just like a word calculator. You give it some kind of input in the form of a prompt and then in the background, the LLM will crunch some numbers based on all the text it's ever seen before and then give you the most likely response that's going to best answer your question. And the LLM is the model behind all the popular AI tools like ChatGPT, DeepSeek, and Google's new AI search summarizer feature powered by Gemini. LLMs form the basis behind all these powerful tools that come out that speed up the creation of anything in our digital world. You can build apps in a matter of hours as opposed to days, you can create photorealistic videos in minutes, and you can write entire books in a matter of seconds. LLMs can be great chatbots, but nowadays they can do so much more. When you connect an LLM through an external software tool called an API, you can give an LLM access to real world data and information such as today's weather, stock prices, or even live game scores that makes LLMs these days much more powerful. And you can also give these types of LLMs specific abilities to act on the information they receive, such as clicking through different web browsers or actually acting on your computer or desktop. And we call these specific types of LLMs agents. Agents don't just have the ability to answer questions, they can also act on the information they receive as well as talk to other agents to give you more accurate responses. For example, OpenAI recently released the Operator Agent, which has its own little web browser that it actually clicks through and opens different links to help you find the information you're looking for. There are also different agents out there that help you do different kinds of research, automations of tasks, as well as do real world jobs like writing code, booking flights, and ordering pizza. By combining the ability to gather and act on real world information, these agents can become very powerful AI assistants that helps handle complex tasks for you. Now these LLM powered agents do have limitations and one of them is how much memory they can retain at any given time, which is what we call their short term memory or their context window or context length. You can think of a context window much like this whiteboard. If I want to add new information to it, once the whiteboard fills up, I have to erase something in order to make room for new information. And this comes out sometimes whenever you're chatting with ChatGPT for a long time. If you ever realize that it forgets earlier parts of the conversation, that just means you've exceeded its context window. This is why long-term memory solutions like vector databases are often used to help LLMs remember information beyond their context window. And this is where RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation comes in. And it's pretty much a workflow that involves looking up relevant data and giving it to the LLM before it answers the question in order to help the LLM more accurately respond to your prompt. For example, you can think of RAG like a librarian who pulls up relevant books and information that is relevant to the topic you're trying to search from a library in the same way that you have specific mechanisms to pull relevant information from a vector database to help your AI be able to answer your question more accurately. And RAG allows AI to be able to retrieve relevant, up-to-date, and specialized information on demand, making it far more knowledgeable than just relying on its built-in training data. In addition to RAG, another popular technique for making LLMs smarter is literally in your prompt just telling it to explain its reasoning step by step. And this is what we call chain of thought reasoning. And with chain of thought, DeepSeek was able to almost match and sometimes outperform OpenAI's models. Even OpenAI themselves use chain of thought reasoning for their O1 reasoning model. And with chain of thought and some other techniques, they were able to increase their scores and their accuracy on different math competitions and tests from 13% using GPT-4.0 to over 83% using their latest O1 model.
Chain of thought reasoning ultimately improves LLM accuracy by forcing the LLM to explain its reasoning step by step with multi step reasoning and logical deductions. Chain of thought reasoning, along with RAG, also helps us reduce hallucinations in our LLM models, where a hallucination is just a model outputting information that sounds correct but actually isn't correct. And this is because LLMs are just trained really to predict what the next likely word is. They don't actually have the reasoning ability out of the box to be able to say, okay, is what I'm saying now logically consistent with what I'm gonna say 50 words from now? They don't have that ability, which is why we need chain of thought reasoning and retrieval augmented generation to give it updated information and data in order to also think step by step and prevent hallucinations. Chain of thought reasoning is a specific type of prompt engineering technique where prompt engineering is the method behind how do we craft prompts in order for the LLM to output specific responses that best align with what we want. For example, if you ask an LLM for movie recommendations, you want to also include in your prompt different genres, time periods, maybe certain celebrities or actors that you like watching so that the model is able to narrow down its search and output results in movies that you would more likely want to watch. As opposed to you being very generic and vague, the model is going to have a harder time answering your questions. So in general, with prompts, you want to be as detailed and as specific as possible. And that's going to ensure that the model's output is going to be more aligned with what you're looking for. Model distillation is what happens when you have a larger model, which we call a teacher, teach what it knows to a student. So the student's able to replicate what the model, larger model knows and understands. The issue with a lot of LLMs these days is they're because they're so large, they require a lot of expensive compute and GPUs and resources to be able to run them. So what you can do is actually have a smaller model, which could probably fit on most laptops, then learn from the training data of the larger LLMs, where the larger LLMs will make training data that where they explain how they answered certain questions. And from a smaller model, they're able to then learn from that data to then, in a lot of cases, perform at a similar accuracy to the larger model at a fraction of the cost and memory needed. So that way, the smaller LLMs are able to be then used in applications and deployed everywhere. Temperature is also an important parameter of large language models, where it ranges from zero to one, where zero is the least random, where it's the most scientific, most conservative, and most repetitive outputs, whereas one is the most creative and, and most random outputs, but also more, most susceptible to hallucinations. So there is a trade-off between either end that just depends on the application you're using it for. For example, in a legal application where you want the highest possible accuracy, you generally want closer to zero temperature. Whereas if you're generating new ideas or poetry or art, you generally want higher temperature so that's more creative and is more able to more likely create something unique and new. And lastly, multimodal just refers to an LLM being able to accept not only text, but other files as input, like images, videos, Excel sheets, PDFs, and ChatGPT can do all those things except video. And there are models like Gemini, which are able to actually process large amounts of video and then create summaries from them. So you can have LLMs not only do text, can only input in other file formats in addition to text, but they can also output other file formats in addition to text as well, making LLMs having a broader range of use cases. And these are the top 10 Gen AI concepts that you need to know if you want to read about AI online in the news, as well as in different AI research. And if you enjoyed my explanations, I have other videos where I also explain other AI concepts if you're interested in watching.